There's a knock at the door. Answer it. It's House Calls with Dr. Vincent West, medical doctor. Only on the Test Podcast. Dr. Vincent West, medical doctor with the Fantastic Podcast and God bless you, my new podcast. And I'm here today with an amazing band. Uh, this is part two of this interview for their new album, Where Only Gods May Tread, which dropped yesterday from Majestic. I have the pleasure of speaking with Jason, the vocalist, and how are you doing, sir? I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. Awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing okay, and I thank you so much for doing this today. And of course, uh, we're talk everything uh, where only gods may tread today and uh, which dropped yesterday which is exciting it's a great record and uh, we'll jump right into this thing here so uh, track one uh, follow the deceiver what can you tell us about that track uh, well this track I think is uh, all, like all the tracks that we do now um, all the all the lyrics anyway they all um, come from like the the, our personal perceptions of the world around us, um, our personal feelings, our emotions. Some some of them are about experiences. So I'm not going to go like too. I'm not going to delve too deeply into like what what specific lyrics means. But I'll give you because I like I like to leave everything a little bit ambiguous. Sure, like sure. The listener, absolutely. To to kind of put their own meaning, their own stamp. On what they think the song is about, and then uh, you know, because I I want I want people to listen to the album, and I want them to make, make a connection with it. I want them to feel the music the same way that we did. Okay. And the only way I think is is by having that connection, by having that, that, that relating those those lyrics and those themes to uh, maybe something that's happened to you in your life, something like that. Um, but I'll tell you, I'll give you, I'll give you the main gist of certain things. But yeah, follow the deceiver. Um, I think it's it's kind of the way that the world now seems to take its news and its facts from stuff like social media rather than like actual actually going out and you know getting this information for themselves and I think like a lot of things are uh, well a lot of things are just untrue aren't they Right. You see so much stuff like on social media and that that gets I guess put out there and and then all of a sudden it people like so many people believe it as fact and stuff like that and it's just insane. And I think uh, you know, it's it's a little bit like that really. It's more like a commentary on like how how different the world has become and like where is it heading? Like do we care what 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 the difference between like the truth and falsehood is anymore do we even give a shit right because you know like a lot of that like I see so much like where it's you see people like talking about stuff and you're like that that's definitely not true 100% is definitely not true right like, so many people will believe it and it's like do you even care do you even care that that's not true or do you just want do you just want to believe it do you want something to be outraged about do you need a cause to fight for is this is this is this the right one like you know it's all these kind of questions I think excellent it's, uh, so rather you know I think it's I think it's quite an interesting thing oh very much and, and, a, and a hell of a way to kick off the record um, and then uh, track two no half measures yeah yeah so uh, basically taking up picking up back where uh, follow the deceiver leaves off you just, you just smashing headlong straight into this next track and um Again, like read, read, uh, listen to the lyrics in it is yet another another commentary on the state of the world at the moment. How everything's so everyone's so obsessed with with fame and 
leading people and having people follow them like you see it all over like look at social media sure again like follow follow us like this subscribe all these words all these buzzwords and it's all like you know because people want people they want your money they want your attention they want they want something from you because everybody's after something right do you know what I mean and it's and it's again it's like is this where the world's heading do people really care about this or are you just happy to have someone to follow do you need someone to follow right or do you or should you be the leader should you be the leader in your own world do you know what I mean oh yeah absolutely absolutely it's great um and I don't know just to kind of stop a second ask you this because I was talking to Sean about this yeah here where I'm at in Florida, I've noticed, and I, as as an adult, it, it's actually made me disgusted with living in this country. Everyone is just out for themselves, and they could care less if they ran over and killed me leaving the grocery store, as long as th- their family and their friends are safe. And I think that's disgusting. That's something I'm it's seeing crazy. right now here. Well, there you go. Well, that, that's exactly the kind of mentality that that we're talking about yeah yeah but it's like is that, is that the right mentality is it not the right mentality <laughs> right. these are the questions that you have to ask yourself right right you know what I mean we're not telling you what's right or wrong right we're just opening up this kind of worms and saying look look at the world this is the world around us this is how it's changing right this is where it's heading is this what you want are right sure? it's, it's very relatable because <laughs> if it is then that's up to you like do you know what I mean <laughs> right everybody's got free will that's one of the beautiful things or well well sometimes it's beautiful sometimes it's fucking horrible but like that's one of the things about being humans is that you have free will so we're not here to tell you what's right or wrong we're just telling you like look this is this is the world around you right this is what we're doing to it is this what you want <laughs> or should we be doing something else right <laughs> it's it's brilliant it really is it's it's and Sean and I kind of touched on a little bit it's obviously more with you it's it's exciting as well uh, and then uh, track three uh, impending dominance oh yeah mate I love that track that's definitely like I, I would say that this is one of the this is one of the ones that's more old school than jested if you know what I mean like absolutely this, this track like harkens back like this is but again like these are, these are the themes lyrically it's it's all about like you might think like a lot of people think you know we go around with the whole slam kings thing and we use like a lot of like you you think maybe narcissistic language or whatever in in our lyrics but it's not about that man like it's about self empowerment when we, we talk about being kings or whatever it's not about like being kings over anybody else it's about a be, being a king by being a god in your own kingdom, taking control of your own life. Right. Never taking no for an answer. Do you know what I mean? If exactly. You want, if you want something and you've got passion for it, like us with this band, like we've all come from fucking nothing. Like we, we're all like council estate kids. Do you know what I mean? Like none, sure. of, none of us had a pot to piss in between us. Like we still haven't got a fucking pot to piss in between us. And um, we, we're never going to forget that shit. But like, We've, we've earned everything we've had. So, like, to us, it's like, that's our mindset. It's like, sure. you've got to take control. Like, you are in control of your own destiny. And, you like, humans are amazing, man. They can be, they can be like I said before, they can be awful. But they can be amazing. Like, the things that humans can achieve. And it's it's like, we're, we're like, you know, we're, we're proof of that shit. Like, like, nobody ever wanted to give us a chance back in the day when we started. Sure. Like, everybody told us that we weren't good enough. Like, all that kind of stuff. And we, we just never gave up. We never gave up. When someone told us we weren't good enough, we said, all right, then. We're going to show you why you're fucking wrong. <laughs> right, we're gonna, we're right. Gonna take, we're going to write these songs. We're going to make this album. We're going to ram it down your fucking throat. And it's, that's the kind of shit that we're talking about. That's the impending dominance that we're talking about. It's all about self-empowerment. It's right. not about putting yourself above anybody else. It's about showing what you are worth. Right. If you know what I mean. Absolutely, absolutely. I can relate to that with uh, this podcast. We've been doing it for almost five years. And just keep gnawing away at it, you know? Just keep keep pushing. And, that's it. Yeah. Uh, and then track... What's that? I said if you love something and you got, like, true passion for it, 
just you've got to go for it man like because otherwise you'll just start do you want to live the rest of your life wondering what if right no, yeah I don't I'm not somebody not that can handle the what if stuff chase your <laughs> fucking passion <laughs> right uh and let's see here uh track four the list <laughs> right see now this this is a. Uh, this is this is where shit gets interesting. So, like how, like how this goes back to what I was just saying, um, how a lot of people never gave us a chance. Like, um, you know, we took a lot of shit, like, and we had to take a lot of flack, and people telling us we were shit and all that stuff. And so, basically, we had a we had a mental list of everybody that shit on us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody that told us that we were fucking not good enough and that and we were just like right okay but we're gonna check back on all these people when we put out a fucking the album that we were always meant to put out which was this this fucking album where only gods may tread right and then uh, when that album comes out we'll uh we'll, we'll we'll come back to these people and go yeah what are you fucking saying now so yeah that's uh that's what the list is about that's it's a special thing to have a list, you know. <laughs> That's great. You've got to keep a list, man. You've got to keep a list. Oh, it's great. It's I love it. Um, <laughs> Make it the fuck you list. That's what list. Yes, is. sir. Yes, sir. That's a, that's a very important list. Uh, I, I have one as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, track <laughs> track five: the burden of our failures. Ah, uh, right. Well, I can't. I can't. I can't really speak too much on what this song is actually written about because Sean wrote the lyrics for this song right so this is personal to him it's a Sean uh, song so yeah Sean's the man to ask about the burden of our failures because he lyrically he wrote all of that um, but yeah I can talk about it as a track yeah it's, please yeah seriously uh, bro fucking hell my god what a performance he put on that as well and and with all with, it, with all the uh, guests that we got on this album we didn't like because all other bands like whenever they have a a guest on a track nine times out of ten it's just like they just turn up for like a 30 second verse and then that's sure, it sure sure do you know what I mean whereas we were like with the guests that we get on this album we want to build the tracks around them and like have a proper feature if you're gonna feature feature don't don't just be on a little bit and then that's it that's not a feature man that's Right. Just turn it up. I just hit that. Go all so, the way. Don't go half assed. We're going to write your songs for these people. Right. And uh, I think it worked so well. Like, so, so well. Like, he just, he just added something so. Uh, I can't even. So melancholy. So, like, morose to that song. And it just, like, increased the size of it sonically tenfold, man. I fucking love that track. It's amazing. I mean, atmospheric as fuck. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and then track six, Dead Seraphic Forms. Seraphic Forms? I'm probably saying that wrong. Seraphic. 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 Um, yeah, so that, that, that song was... Um, that song's got a little bit of personal stuff in it and that um, to do with our, like, you know, our bassist he left. Um last year right and that's the only band member that we've ever changed in like nearly 15 years since we started right so like obviously like you know like we're, we're all still on good terms and everything that just it, it was just one of them things he just didn't want to tour as much as we were touring and shit so you know there's some like there's some personal shit in there but there's no bad blood there's no hard feelings or anything but you know when something big happens in our lives the best the best way for us to uh to vent those emotions and stuff is to write a song about it because that's where it's as raw and real as it gets right um, and he and, and he was with, he, he's still like he's still my best friend and like you know he's still best friends with the guys in the band nice so you know he was with us for long that long that it's not like we're not like shitting on him or anything sure it's sure song. it's just you know it's just the way that you have to get it out uh, yeah, he knows all about that shit. Anyway, I'm sure he he was with us for long enough. He knows exactly how we deal with shit. So. Sure. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. <laughs> uh, but the track, right. fuck me, and the video. Jesus. Um, yeah, the video was interesting because uh, that was literally when the uh, lockdown started. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Coronavirus 
now. Right. So, uh, yeah, we were like, oh, shit, what are we going to do for a, for a music video? Because obviously we can't do any... Um, can't do any music videos like with proper extras and you know all the all the bells and whistles and shit so we're right. fast so we were just like oh shit what should we do um, and I was watching like reaction videos to like the uh, track that th- we'd released before uh-huh. which was Impending Dominance right and I was just watching reaction videos and I was like oh shit like what if we like did like a super cut of loads of our, our friends people we know like reacting to that video so so yeah we started doing that we emailed all, all our mates and that and loads of them said yeah so I had to fucking edit the video though and it took forever <laughs> until like two weeks because I had to because it was 48 people in the video wow and they'd all send, they'd all sent us videos of them reacting to the song and the song's five minutes long so I had to watch through all of them and edit all of them down and get like all the different little clips of it my god it's a weeks but it looks amazing like I couldn't be happier with it so yeah it excellent be beast video you know I wanted to tell you because I talked to Sean about this when I, I saw you guys in Atlanta back in February the only concert I got to see this year so oh, oh shit amazing and I was there you, I'll prove it to you you guys were like wiped out of merch and I you, you, you played the, the one record all the way through which I was excited to get to see because I didn't I never got to see that and I noticed, because I asked Sean, that's kind of how we got on the subject of your bassist, was I noticed you guys didn't have a live bassist. And, yeah. and but, you know, you still destroyed it. Because I had seen you previously on the Summer Slaughter Tour. Um, yeah. With Suffo and all that, you know. And, but yeah. So, I thought that was really interesting. And he kind of went into his story about it. So, that's really interesting to hear about that. I'm glad to hear you guys are still friends, too. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, we're still we're still fucking really close mates and shit. So that'll never change. I mean, I've I've known Brad since I was eleven years old. That's awesome. Thirty three now, so yeah. Like, so we'll we'll never we'll never not be like best mates. It's just it's just one of them things. Like, is the, the tour in life is not for everybody. It's really hard. Like, sure. it's great. Don't get me wrong. We're doing you know we're we're doing what we've always wanted to do. But it's like you know you are away from home a lot. Like, and it is. It is, it is tough sometimes so you know we understand why you, why you didn't want to do it anymore so it's not like it's it's just it's like it's one of those things it's like we're sad he's not with us anymore but we're happy that he's happy sure do you sure, know what I mean sure it's one of them. but That's obviously we're a death metal band so we gotta sound fucking mean and you gotta keep going yeah and, it, so. <laughs> and I'm sure he wants you guys to keep going too yeah, so yeah <laughs> Uh, and let's see, track seven, Another Breath. Oh, mate, that one. Oh, my God. Uh, Sam wrote the lyrics for that, so um, I'm not too sure what it's about, like, to him. Okay. Uh, like, so I'm not sure what the intended, like, meaning of it is, because we don't really ask each other either. Sure, it's, sure. It makes it, you know, it's, it's personal to us. Like, if, and again, it's all like, if that's what you think it's about, then that's what it's about, as far as I'm concerned. But as, as a track, man, like, again, like how we were saying, like, we wrote songs around our guest vocalists. Like, so these songs were written with the guest vocalists in mind, and I think you can definitely hear a lot of Crowbar in Another Breath. And obviously with Kirk Quin- Quinstein, it just, ah, oh, God. Like, I was like we we wanted him we really really wanted him and we wrote the track with him intended right but like it's you know like it's one of the things like you never think that it's going to happen though do you sure do you know what I mean you sure know, oh should we ask Kirk Quincy from Crowbar and Down if he'll be on the album and you're like oh it's never going to happen but but it fucking did and we were so fucking happy and um I remember when uh when because it was a, a the bassist Shane out of Crowbar who uh, recorded Kirk doing the vocals right. and he sent them over like the first time and we were like oh my god this is amazing this is going to sound so insane right and then uh, the next day <laughs> he sent us some more and he was like oh yeah we recorded the harmonies as well and so we like recorded a load of harmonies to go with it and we played it all and we were like oh my god this is going to be a monster this track sure and uh, yeah if it was it was it's, it's one of my favourite tracks off the album um, the music video for it as well is amazing by uh, Shane Minow he 
he's um, an animator from South Africa. Okay. And uh, we, so we all grew up through like the we're all we were all born in. Well, I was born in eighty seven. Right. Uh, I think Sean was born in eighty six. So we're all like grew up through the nineties. Sure. Know, like, when MTV was still playing metal and it was still a rock like sure. TV station. And sure. And shit. So we we grew up watching all like the. Um, all the claymation videos, you know, like the tour videos, um, Rahata Mahata from uh, by Sepultura, sure, like all that kind of stuff. And we just wanted to do like a homage to that, you know, a throwback back to when music videos were sick. <laughs> right. Well, that's fun. Yeah, so um, that's why we went with that. And um, I think he, I think Shane did a fantastic job, man. It looks so good. It's so cool. <laughs> It's a great track. Uh, and let's see here. Track 8, Black Pill. Yeah, uh, with Matt Honeycutt from Kublai Khan. Uh, we did a um, we did a, a tour with uh, Despised Icon, Shadow of Intent and Kublai Khan. It was amazing. Okay. And, um, and obviously we got really pally with Kublai Khan. They're a great live band. Absolutely one of the best live bands you'll see if you ever get the chance to go and see Kublai Khan go see him just genius and um, we got really pally with him and we just thought like he's got such a distinctive like bark to his vocal style we just we were like oh he's so unique man we need to get him on the track so we, we hit him up he said he wanted to do the track so we sent him the track and lyrically um, he's kind of he's, he's kind of about like how everybody seems to be wrapped up in their own little cults you know how this like like it's going back to what we were talking about before how everybody seems to flock around little leaders sure um, as if they need someone to follow and um, I think it touches on that kind of stuff but yeah again it's like I don't want to I don't want to give too much away and I don't want to I don't want to delve too deeply into like saying exactly what 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 each song's about because uh I, can't, I think it kind of takes away from the mystique but yeah there's a lot of cult shit in there so you should check that shit out <laughs> it's very interesting excellent excellent and then uh, track 9 Forsaken in Desolation Forsaken in Desolation oh my god right so having this at such a such a late stage in the album I, I, I honestly I think it's like a stroke of genius because um, you get <clears throat> it's around the midpoint you kind of slow the tempo kind of slows down and you get your slower slower more doomier sludgier tracks like uh, Burden of Our Failures Another Breath um, and Black Pill Black Pill's kind of mid mid paced it's, uh, it's got quite a hardcore sort of attitude to that song so then when Forsaken and Desolation comes in like full blown fucking brutal death melt mode again oh it just picks that fucking pace up man some of the vocal patterns in that song as well are insane like Sam wrote the uh, lyrics and the vocal patterns for that and my god like the man's a beast yeah he, got, he gave, gave me a bit of a vocal workout on that one there's a, there's a vocal pattern in it and uh, I think it says uh, a palpitating past perusing picked up a positive past like and I was like fucking hell <laughs> You get me on some fucking M&M shit like on this now, like, <laughs> like all that lip racing and shit. It's a wild good man. I fucking love that track. Yeah, that's a that was one of the first tracks I heard actually. I really like it. Um, really? Yeah. Um, and let's see here. So track ten, uh, the final track, uh, "Leap of the Faithless." Yeah, this is actually my favorite track. This is my favorite track on the whole album. I think it's one of the best songs we've ever written like ever like, it's one of my favourite Ingestors songs like, ever it's nine minutes long but don't let that put you off because it because it oh it no it's feel, great like, it's, full. it's epic like I told Sean it's a <laughs> it's a standout track it's, it's unbelievable and it was originally intended to be um, an instrumental really it wasn't supposed to, yeah it wasn't supposed to have any lyrics on it there. and Sean Sean played it to, I think we were in the tour van and I think it was maybe was it last year? Yeah, it was last year when we were signed the van and he played me the song and I was like, oh my god. It's like, right, leave it with me and then like a couple of hours later I pretty much wrote all of the lyrics for it and 
yeah, I was just in love with it from that, that moment on. And it's still my favorite track now. <laughs> It, you know, I think it's probably my favorite track on the album. I really like that one. I like that it's that long too. I thought it was epic to you know have it all over the place and you know. Um, it's, it's like, um, there's a lot of elements in that in that song that we've heard, well across the whole album actually. There's a lot right. of elements that we've experimented with and touched upon in earlier releases, but we've never really like felt comfortable enough. Or confident enough in our songwriting um, to actually incorporate them in the way that we have on this album, and in, in particular on "Leap of the Faithless." There's a lot of melody on there, and uh, I think it just adds to the epicness. We try. We've what we've tried to do is we've tried to add elements without taking away from any of the heaviness or the aggression or the brutality. And I think I think we've I think we've pretty much hit on the, the nail on the head. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, yeah, man, and the, and to talk about this real quick, the album artwork is killer as well. Oh yeah, Dan Seagrave, man, he's knocked out of the park. Oh, it's he's great. Out of it's, it's one of those. It's one of those artists that we've always wanted to, always wanted to work with, but it was just a, it was a question of budget that like we could never afford it. Because, sure, you know, he's Dan Seagrave, man. Like, <laughs> Right. <laughs> so it was like it was just it was just like waiting for the right time. And what we wanted to do was we we wanted to have a Dan Seagrave piece, but we wanted it to look unlike anything that he's ever done before. So when we we gave him we gave him the uh, the concept like the brief, you know, like saying what we wanted it to look like with you know idea and shit. Sure. Uh, and then we 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 said to him that we wanted him to work in really light colours you know like the whites and the blues that the album are well what it looks like now um, because if you look pa- uh, back across all of his all of his past works there's nothing that's that bright always worked oh no it's, like this it's extremely so unique we wanted it to be yeah really unique and he, he actually said to to Lynn like, afterwards when it was finished he was like you know cheers for like uh putting me out of my comfort zone like, I've never worked with colours like this so we've literally got like a really unique Dan Seagrave piece so I couldn't be happy with it <laughs> oh it's 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 incredible um, it really is I mean the album's incredible but to have that you know the art piece as well especially from him it's 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 outstanding um, thanks man yeah absolutely and guys where only gods may tread is available now from ingested through unique leader records and man i can't thank you enough for taking the time to do this with me today hey no problem man the pleasure's all mine honestly are you, you uh real quick be- before i let you go just one more question are you a big horror guy like sean yeah yeah i love horror films man can you run through a That's few you shit. like because that we're big in the horror here at phantasm so what sort of horror films that I like? Um, I like I like stuff like well, recently the stuff I've been watching is Mandy. Um, I've been watching Nicholas Cage. Oh yeah, the Nicholas Cage one. Yeah, fantastic. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watched that. I watched um, Color Out of Space as well. Oh, okay, Richard Cage. Stanley. Yeah, um, you know the first thing of his really I ever good. saw was Hardware. Have you ever seen Hardware? Hardware? No, I don't think I have. It's the f- first thing I ever saw that he did, and it was recommended in Fangoria because Claude Barker was really big on Richard Stanley, and that was the first thing I ever saw. Definitely check it out. It's really good. Oh, well, dude. Very Speaking bizarre. Of Barker is, is all of the Hellraisers as well. Oh, yeah. It's well, cool. not all of them. Hellraiser well. Of one and two. <laughs> and then I kind of I liked Inferno, actually, you know. You know which one I like, and this is weird because it's Doug Bradley's favorite. I love the third film. I love that movie, that man. One? CD head and Bob yep. Wyatt I know it's corny, but I <laughs> love that movie, man. It was just, I it's, loved it. It had Motorhead in it, and Armored Saint was playing in the film, and I love that movie. I saw it at the theater. I love that film. Um, there's one bit in it. I think it's got my favorite Hellraiser scene in it. Is the bit where. Um, He's in the church, and then Pinhead like pulls the pins out of his head, and they've got like worms on him. And yeah. He like puts them through his wrists and puts his arms out with the crucifix, and he goes like, "I am the way." And Dude, I'm, I'm telling you. And then like, I'm sure that the stained glass behind him like just bursts. Yeah, it's it's 
the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. And that's, he loves that movie. He said shooting that was the most fun, if you ever meet him. Like, that's, we were, I, I didn't meet, you know, do it for the podcast, but I met him years ago, and that's what he kept telling me. He's like, I love the third film. Everybody makes me crow on it. And I was like, and because that was the slick I had him sign, he was like, I'll just give it to you. Because he's like, he, he, he said, everybody hates it. He's like, I love that movie. And I do too. I don't know why. It's just, I know it's corny, but it had the chick from Deep Space Nine in it that played, you know, it, it was in it. She was also in like uh, the, the show Becker with, it was like a comedy. But she's like the, the Terry somebody. She's also in like Back to School with like Rodney Dangerfield. That's like the first thing she ever did. But like. I don't know, man. I like Hellraiser three. Like everybody makes me eat shit over it, but I love that one. I don't know. Fair enough. It's got it's got some cool shit in it, like the bit in the church and the um, oh, what's it called now? The monolith thing, where it's like you know where Pinhead's trapped at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. A pillar thing that looks cool as fuck as well. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild, man. Well, it's... I think the only thing I didn't like was like how corny the Cenobites were. Oh, it is corny. No, it's completely. Like that was the only thing I didn't like about it. I was like, oh man, it is. It so is. Cool. If you watch yeah. even now, it's super cheesy. But for whatever reason, that movie was always kind of a comedy piece for me. I don't know. I love it. Like it's fun, you know. It's just, yeah. it's kind of like Army of Darkness. It's it's bad, but it's fun, you know. But it's, you know. I do love Army of Darkness. Oh, and, and Evil Dead too. Oh yeah, those are those are fun films. I think my I think my favorite my favorite ever horror movie, like just for like how like how it makes me feel. Okay. It's probably uh, original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, cause I, I it's just a something about it. Like, it's just like from the moment it starts, it's just uncomfortable to look at like you know like the the sound of it the way it looks like the the horrible sort of like washed out yellow colour of everything like everything oh god I don't know I love it but it's just like just makes me feel uneasy from the moment that the credits start and it's just like that that like (laughs) me It's it honestly it honestly is probably my favorite as well. And I I'll tell you something I love about it. I love in American Psycho where Christian Bale's like working out with it on in the background. Yes, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I love that movie as well. American Psycho. I, I fucking love it. I love that movie. I love where he's just like pa- power working out while that's on in the background. Yeah. Because he just loves the screaming, man. He's a psycho. <laughs> I love that film. It's great. And um, what's the other one I love? Uh, uh, Devil's Rejects. Love oh, okay. It. Absolutely love it. Don't like. Don't like um, House of a Thousand Corpses. I, I thought that like movie was corny. I thought it was corny. Yeah, I didn't like any of the others, but I love Devil's Rejects. It's just something about it. I'm just like, oh, sure. I fucking love this. These three are horrible, but I want them to win. <laughs> right. <laughs> and those movies are all so different from each other too. Like I remember seeing House of a Thousand Corps, I just never liked it, you know, and, and I don't know, it just feels just like a music video to me more than a film. You know, yeah. and but yeah. And yeah, it's pretty shy as well. <laughs> yeah, it's well you know man, him putting his wife and everything gets old too to me and it's like God, yeah. I mean, she. See, I liked, she's I liked, attractive. Uh, it's like, dude, you have to put her in every fucking film. Like, come on, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I liked Halloween. I liked the remake of Halloween, the first one that I did. Did but you? I hated the, the the second one that I did. I thought it was rubbish. The second one, but I liked the fir- the uh, first remake. I did. I thought you, that was okay. You know, what did you think of the last Halloween film, the newest one? Uh, I. I can't really say because I watched like I think I watched like the first half an hour maybe 40 minutes of it and then I fell asleep I'm so. going to be honest with you like I like the score because John did it with his son Cody uh, Carpenter yeah. but, but, but like the movie the movie just felt I don't know like I just didn't really care for it. I don't know. I and then they want you to forget about every film except the first one. I like some of the Halloween sequels. I love Halloween three, the season of the witch. I fucking love that movie. Same here. I love Halloween four. I love Halloween six as well. The one with Paul Rudd. It's amazing. Yeah, all good. It's a fun it's movie, a man. Good. Yeah, it's good shit. I I I like those movies. Everybody makes me crow on them, but I, I like them, man. I think those are good films, but. Uh, 
you know the it's like they're a product of time, isn't it like that is, that's it's just what it is like and if you were there and you watched it like you know around the time when it came out you're still gonna love it man because of that nostalgia shit so it's like I'm like I don't give a shit how how shit people think some of the movies I love are I'm like right. I like fucking Beastmaster and shit like that dude Beastmaster's fucking yeah. awesome there it is in the sand bit <laughs> oh it's it's awesome you know, I was gonna. I never got to tell Sean this. You'll have to tell Sean I said this. If Ingested was a horror movie, do you know what horror movie I think you guys would be? Oh, so like just nice. just in general, if you you when you guys are playing live, like if I had to, to describe it with a horror movie, Dead Alive, the lawnmower scene. That'll be really amazing, amazing. It's like you guys yeah, go into the crowd with a lawnmower. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, that's... Someone needs, someone needs to recut that into a music video for one of our tracks. That would be incredible, man. I wish I could do it. I would totally do it, because that, that would be a good one. That would be a good yeah, one. Yeah, man, I can see that. If I, if I, if I could um, uh, say that Ingested was a, was a horror movie, I'd say that we were the John Carpenter's The Thing. <laughs> Because we're just amalgamate with the best bits of all your favorite death metal bands. We're just amalgamating all of the best bits, all the best riffs, all the best bits, all the best drumming bits. Right. All these bits like, that you love, we've like assimilated. And like now we're like this big fucking <laughs> head with fucking spider legs running across your fucking kitchen, trying to crawl into your ear holes. That's us. We're the thing, mate. <laughs> that's that's funny. <laughs> oh God, man! I can't thank you enough for doing this today. I really appreciate it. Welcome, dude. Thank you very yep. much. Thanks for having me. Well, no, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode with Ingested Focus, Jason Hayes. Only on House Calls with Dr. Best Western Doctor. Not